everybody. I'm Brian Julius. I'm the Chief Content Officer for Enterprise DNA. And today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the second in a series of techniques for creating really quick, um, complex custom visuals. So the first one in the series that we did was um, a couple of weeks ago, and it looked at um, quick SVG graphics. And so this was how to use the Quick Measures Pro um, external tool to create this type of graphical dashboard. Today, what we're going to look at doing is creating these types of fairly complex visuals, and we're going to do it with one line of code, and we're going to do the whole page in about five minutes. Um, so I want to show you how to do this, um, because particularly for these type of, these type of visuals, um, they're not easy to do as far as I know, using any other any other custom visual or technique. Um, you can certainly do them via Deneb, um, but that's going to take a lot more than one line of code. And for some of these, like for histograms, you can use a custom visual, but then the way we're going to divide these up, um, it's beyond the capability of those visuals to do that. So anyway, um, the first thing to know is that we're doing this through R. And I think R kind of gets a bad rap is hard to use because people look at this and immediately think, oh, it's a lot of coding, it's complex. And it's really not. Um, that I mean, it, it can be when you're doing a lot of statistical analysis with it, but in terms of visuals and particularly the the package we're going to use today called ggpubr um, is really, really simple. And so the first thing to know about R, and I'm going to assume that you've got R installed on your machine along with our studio. And if you don't know how to do that, um, if you're an enterprise DNA member, George Mount has a great video on how to get this, this all set up. Um, if you're not, there are tons of other, um, videos on YouTube on how to get R and R studio, um, loaded on your machine. So the thing to know about how R handles visuals is it's primarily done through something called packages and R has a lot of analogs to Power BI, and the way it handles visuals is very, very similar to Power BI's custom visuals. And so there are two commands that are relevant to packages in R, one of which is install. And install is something you only have to run one time, and it's the equivalent of downloading your custom visual from the App Store. Um, so in this case, what we would do the first time um, in R, or I'm doing it in R Studio, but we can also do it right within Power BI, is just run install and then ggpubr and hit return. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it installed. Um, and that'll run through. It'll download from the repository and it'll load that into your, into your R installation. And then the second command, is library. And this is something you have to run in each report that you create. And this is basically the equivalent of once you've got the custom visual downloaded from the app store, it's loading it into your report. And so that's really what you need to know about, about managing packages for this. Um, in terms of, in terms of, um, the packages we're going to need for this exercise, there are two of them. One is called ggplot2, which is the primary charting engine for R. And the second is this ggpubr, which is a simplified version of ggplot um, that has what it calls publication-ready graphics. And it's got kind of minimal configuration that just is kind of set up to look good with about 15 different chart types. And so I'm going to show you can show you how that that all works right within Power BI. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like, and the the data set we're going to be using for um, our our mock up here is the Titanic data set. And so, if you're familiar with that one, um, basically what it what it is, is it's basically all the passengers who were on the Titanic, who survived, who died, what passenger class they were in, um, whether they were male or female, their age, the fare they paid, 
and then where they, where they got on. Um, and there are three locations. There's, um, Southampton, Cherbourg, and Queenstown. And there are a couple that are unknown as to where, when they, where their port of origin was. So th that's the simplified version of this data set. Um, and that's what we're going to be using for our, our visualization today. So let's, let's kind of create this from scratch. And so the first thing, the first thing you do when you're creating an R visual is you click on R script and what we're going to do is let me just move the recording toolbar out of the way. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take and we're going to drop the, um, the fields that we're going to use into the, the visual. And in this case, it's just, um, age and, and sex. And so, um, if we go back here, this is just the simple, um, the simple box plot and what we can do here is um, we can go in first and just set the title in, in something that looks good. Let's, uh, align it. Um, and then set absolute status. Um, and let's set the text color and the background color. Okay. So that, that's a good template. And now what we can do is we can take, and we've got the fields dropped in that we're going to use. And so now all we have to do is go in and, um, enter the R code and what R does is it has this really unique call called data set. And so basically what it does is it takes the data that you enter either from power query, or in this case on the visuals from these two, um, these two fields, and that's going to be, that's going to be our data set. And so what we do here is just. And this is something we'll have for all of them. We're, we're going to call the two libraries. Um, so we've got um, ggplot2 and library ggpubr. Okay, now here's our one line of code. Um, we're going to paste that in, and that is it. And so if we, if we hit run, creates our box plot. And let's take a look at what this is doing here. This is the way I think about what R is doing visually is it's basically a, a text version of the format pane in Power BI. So in this case, in Power BI, it's all, it's all graphic user interface. And so in this case, like if we were to go down and say, um, effects. So what, what you have here is you would set, you know, your background on your visual border in R, what you would do is you would say, you know, GG box plot. And then you would say, you know, effects, um, background equals on, um, visual border equals off, um, for the the background you'd have, you know, color equals white transparency equals, you know, 100 or one. Um, and so it's just basically a text version of the, the graphic user interface. And the way you know what to enter here is just through a, um, a document that every R package has a very similar document like this. And what it does, it just goes through kind of what they call vignettes and it, it shows you the different types of visuals you can create and then gives examples of the different parameters. And so here we've got 
a list of all the different parameters that we can use and, you know, color for the, the outline, fill the color palette, line type size, and you just basically go through and set those equal to how you want your visual to look. And so if we go back to power BI, um, what we see here is we've got data set. We've got the two variables we want, um, points. So we've got it so that it's going to show the, the, uh, the points up in the, in the max, um, color is based on, on gender. Um, we've got the fill color. We've got the width of the, of the box. We've got the, the color palette we're going to use, and we're telling it to remove the legend. And that's all there is to it. Um, and so what we can do here is for the second ones, we just drop in um, a different command. And let's put our second one in here. And in this case, what we're doing is it's pretty much the same thing. But what we're doing is we're faceting by. And facet by is the R equivalent of small multiples. And so when we, when we pop that in there, we're faceting by embarked. And so we're taking basically the same, the same visual we've created here and creating a small multiples version by the ports of the ports of origin. And so if we hit run, there we go. We've got, we've got four, four box plots that show exactly what we want. And so here, similarly, we're going to move into histograms. Um, and there's this, here's a very simple histogram. You know, you can see how, how simple these can be, um, in terms of just data set, the age variable, um, the number of bins for our histogram and the fill color. And we hit run on that. And there's our passengers by age. And then what we can do if we wanted to is we can use this command called add, um, and let's say we want to add the median line. And we'll just add that in. We'll hit run. And that shows you the median. We can change that then to the mean. Whoop. And hit run again. And that'll change that to the mean. And so, you know, you've got a lot of options. You can change colors, you can change titles, you can change axes. There's, there's really no parameter in these that you can't alter to, you know, fit your theme or the way you want this to look. So let's just run down real quick and we'll bang through just the last, the last few of these. Um, so this one is a faceted histogram and in this case, we're faceting by, um, by both gender and who survived. And so we'll hit run on this one. And you can see this is, this is the type of visual that would be quite hard to create, um, in any other way. As I say, you could do it, you could do it through data, but it would take a fair amount of code to do it. Whereas here it's, it's just one simple line. Um, so let's go through, let's do. Do one more histogram and we'll take this one and we're going to facet this one a little differently. We're going to facet this one by what passenger class, um, they were in and we're going to, we're going to throw a median line in here and we'll hit run. And you can see. That in this case, we just use the default color scheme. So it doesn't really match our theme, but I wanted to show that it'll kind of pick a color scheme if you don't, if you don't, um, enter one. And you can see here that the, the third class men were, where the, the huge number of casualties in the, in the disaster were. And so finally, here's just one other type of chart. Um, as I said, there's about 15 types of charts you can, you can run here. Um, this is one called the QQ plot, um, which if you, if you do a fair amount of work in statistics, you will have seen this. And what this does is this helps you determine whether a, 
a given field is distributed according to a particular distribution. So in this case, we're just looking at whether it's normally distributed by plotting the, the actual distribution against the theoretical distribution. And this, again, this would be quite a difficult thing to do um, in any other way. And here it's just a, it's a couple of parameters and we hit run and there's our, there's our QQ plot with the theoretical against sample. So that is, that's really all I wanted to show today. Um, just how simple this is to, to create, um, how powerful it is, um, and how little R you really need to know. So, um, I hope that inspires some of you to take a look at R, even if it's not something you use regularly because it does have um, tremendous applicability and flexibility for creating charts that are hard to to get any other way. I think they look great. Um, there's a lot more you can do in terms of background color and font and um, all sorts of formatting. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at really easy ways to create great uh, KPI cards. So um, hope you found that useful and look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.